Welcome to the podcast that buffs your Hearthstone game. This is Villain's Chosen. Not all who wander are lost. Greetings, visionaries. Welcome to Valen's Chosen, the podcast geared to buff your Hearthstone game. We exist to help you stay competitive on the ladder without breaking your banks. We talk gameplay, we talk decks, we talk arena. We even help you figure out what your goals are and maybe even talk some dusting, no matter what your card pool is. I'm your host, Rob May, and joining me on our special bonus episode is Eve Martin. Hello. And Andrew Brown. What up? And In then, the what up. <laughs> and then we have our Patreon supporter that is sponsoring this show, Jamie Pseudoping. What's up? Hiya. Jamie Woo-hoo. is, for those of you watching on the video feed, quite entertaining with his aviators and skeleton head. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, yeah, let's let's uh, let me uh, just at the top of the show this week, guys, is just a, a bonus episode because we hit a certain goal on Patreon. If you hit a if you donate at a certain level and your payment clears, then you can be on the uh, the show itself once a uh, once a year. And basically, until we cap out, then we might even have you on the show twice. So this is just a bonus show to appreciate Jamie and. Um, have him just kind of talk about what he wants to talk about for a change, <laughs> just for the whole show. And uh, just note that the audio quality may be different this week for not just technical difficulties, but record differently so that we can have the guests on. So if you guys could just give us a BOTD for that one, then we would be, <laughs> the benefit of the doubt, we would be very obliged. <laughs> Did you just make that up or is that actually a thing? That's actually a thing. <laughs> nice. So Jamie, so Jamie, you realize there's a lot of pressure now because yeah. if this doesn't go well, then if this doesn't gone. go well, then I look even worse. No, <laughs> no we're psyched no to have pressure. you on the show. This should be a lot of fun. Yeah. So Jamie, what's up? Like, what what do you want to talk about <laughs> at the top of the show here? <laughs> uh, I got a bunch of stuff to talk about. Well, mostly speculation stuff. But hey, uh, why don't we start off oh. with some uh, decks that I've been rifling through? You know, awesome. because the ladder has been getting just a little bit stale with these agro shamans going about doing their <laughs> thing in you in the face. So why don't we? We do like to do that. <laughs> yeah. So let's let's start off with this dragon hunter I found. It's kind of cool. All right. So let's discount the snot out of this. What a travesty! Isn't she scrumptious? She's my revolutionary, non-pollutionary mechanical wonder. All right, Jamie, take us away. All right, so we got a dragon hunter. Hunter hasn't been seen for a while because Agro Shaman has kind of taken its place for now. But here we got uh, kind of the upper curve list. So you might be seeing a few more epics than usual, specifically like the Twilight Guardian that I know Eve likes. And Yep. Here we go with a Freezing Trap times one and then King's Elec two. Quick Shot 2, Animal Companion 2, Deadly Shot 2, Eagle Horn Bow 2, Unleash the Hounds times 2, Savannah Hymane 2, Call the Wild 2, Doomsayer 2, Flame Juggler 2, Twilight Guardian 2, Azure Drake 2, Blackwing Corruptor 2, Volcanic Drake 2, and Deathwing. Mm. Volcanic Drake, huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that would works. work well with... Have you played col- this? Um, I played it a couple times just this morning just to see how it actually works out in a little bit of casual, and uh, people are taken by surprise by it. Because <laughs> Volcanic, so. Drake is, <laughs> Volcanic Drake is the one that gets cheaper when your minions have died, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so if you haven't unleashed the hounds around, you could just put that down for free. <laughs> Unleash Doomsayer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. oh the, those Doomsayers, man. I'm starting to understand why you want to put uh, that alchemist in your deck because 
the, the paladins just like drop Doomsayer on turn one if they have the coin and then turn two. Yeah, and Crazy Alchemist just says Which no. Mean, <laughs> you're not losing anything if that's the case, other than you know. Well, if you're aggro shaman for them and you do, put but. down yours, <laughs> you just lost the first two turns. True. Yeah, but Jamie, and that's Jamie, bad. What, <laughs> uh, Jamie, what's the core of this deck? What are the things that uh, you found most useful in this list? Uh, well, MVP for like pretty much all of Hearthstone right now, Doomsayer. We can't say more other than Doom. So we got. Did I miss it? Uh, <laughs> so we got uh, some good early clear in the Deadly Shot and the Eagle Horn Bow that keeps your uh, King's Elec and Flame Jugglers sort of alive at that uh, midpoint that you want to actually gain value and stay alive to the late game. But uh, the late game definitely comes down to uh, Volcanic drapes, dra Drake's dropping and uh, Savannah High Mains right at the end there with Call of the Wild. Really heavy damage going in there. If thing just if poop hits the fan, Deathwing's there for you. I love so, Deathwing. For... <laughs> he's also a great activator for your Twilight Guardian since he's there on turn 10. Blackwing Corruptors as well, just actually clearing off things with three health. I went up against a zoo. We uh, he put a, put a, down a Shadow Imp and uh, the Darkshire Councilman. So I was sitting there looking at a two six, but I still had a charge of my Eagle Horn Bow and a Corruptor, so that was easy enough to deal with. Wait, is that the zero one Blood Imp or the Flame Imp that's three two? Uh, the zero one Blood Imp that pumps okay. uh, toughness. Oh, yeah, got it from a dark peddler, probably. A peddler, yeah. Yeah. yeah so, it's, uh, does this deck struggle to draw? That's my question. Like, when you run only two Azure Drakes for draw, usually it's okay. But, like, with this list, it almost it seems like you're only playing one card a turn. It's like kind of a value dragon hunter. You have yeah. King's Elec, right? Yeah, the true problem comes when you're going up against control decks and your King's Elec isn't pulling the cards that you want out of it. Otherwise, you do have four methods of drawing with Asher Drake and King's Elec. Right. Mm -hmm. And technically the quick shots, but probably yeah. not a reliable yeah. shot. for drawing, yeah. probably on the back foot anyways. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, quick shot, more like Northshire shot, so there you <laughs> go. <laughs> Northshire shot. <laughs> that's fair. So how does the Volcanic Drake's been working out? Like, how are you usually getting them to trigger, uh, at least for, you know... What are they currently? Are they five mana, six fours, and then uh, discount from there? Kind of. I've seen them at four mana a lot of the time, but if you can get a Doomsayer down on a, like turn two and hit at least, let's say they put their fire fire him down and uh, they put like a, I don't know, whatever Zoo does, they do lots of things really fast and they hit your face <laughs> with it. <laughs> <laughs> so long as you get that Doomsayer to go off, that Volcanic Drake drops around four, three mana usually, even okay. two if they have like uh, the tentacles out. Gotcha. So Doomsayer's been doing a lot of justice for that Volcanic Drake. Yep. And you're probably saving your deadly shots for those, you know, turn three, turn four bombs, like uh, Councilman's and uh, Flame Wreath Faceless. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And... Uh, the occasional shadow imp that has to die eventually. <laughs> yeah, there isn't really any AoE here. I was thinking, like, it would be interesting if you're still getting punished by a lot of zoo, if you could tech in a power shot, maybe? Explosive. Oh. Because that would do yeah, that's, damage. That's, that's a consideration, definitely. I mean, you've got the Doomsayers that's kind of an AoE. You've yeah. got Unleash the Hounds and Deadly Shot, which you can combine. I, if you can get, if, if your enemy minions are the right amount of health, yeah. then you can take them out with Unleash the Hounds and save that 7-7, seven, seven, you there know, you or the Deadly Shot for something yeah. like that. But, and then the Black Queen Corruptor can't be underestimated either, because yeah. dealing three Super damage helpful. to anything is, yeah. yeah, really good. So, and then there's a lot of useful tools here. Yeah. I the like Freezing I, Trap. Yeah. Yeah, Why it do you works like? really well against Aggro Shaman because whenever they put down something big and then they're, what is it called, overloaded for the next turn and then it goes right back into their hand and it costs more, it's just such a big tempo loss for them. It's good, yeah. 
The one thing I'm trying to figure out is Deathwing, because you could really just sub that out with any legendary dragon that you have. Um, but with with other choices of like Chilma, Chromagus, um, even Nefarian, uh, what do you, or Ysera, what do you think about? He's a panic button. He's a there's a board in front of me and I'm gonna die next turn, so I throw him down. That's what Deathwing you, is. You really like Deathwing Eve. Yes. Yes, I do. He's a, they didn't see this coming because they're in their head going, there's nothing they can do to me next turn, is what they're thinking once they set up all their stuff. And then Deathwing. Yeah, kind of a nice finisher. Deathwing does that as a finisher, yeah. He just... Yeah. Because the deck, like I was saying earlier, <clears throat> if you're going in that control matchup, Deathwing is the only way you're winning that match. Just because yeah. you don't have any way of drawing, if your Alec doesn't hit at least one minion that you can draw, and then you're only drawing with the Azure Drakes, and you're kind of like trying to play that value game against a, a max value deck, and then you're like behind on board, you're behind on cards, you're like, well, I only have two cards left, let's just throw this Deathwing in here and see what happens. And then in this meta, there's not a lot of uh, pure removal. And Deathwing can probably stick around if they used all their removal on Savannahs and Call of the Wilds already. Yeah. yeah. Does it look like you have anything else in the epic slot that you actually can replace? I think all of the epics in the deck are core. Absolutely. And if you're interested in dragon decks at all, you need to craft the two Twilight Guardians. It's such a, yeah. such a key card for that archetype. And Call of the Wilds... I Wild, craft I, them. You did, yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. I don't think I ever pulled a Twilight Guardian actually. Yeah, no. Yeah. Me neither. But it's a, it's a pretty cool deck list. I think that especially if you're uh, struggling or if if things are feeling stale, this will feel fresher. It plays similarly to a mid range e deck, you know, but has enough weirdness and funness with the dragons. I don't know why dragons are still fun. I feel they like at this are. point, done with them, but. <laughs> Especially in archetypes where they haven't been as strong, like Hunter, it just seems like, ooh, I want to try this out. Yeah, there's a. And it's a surprise factor. Like, the surprise factor is real. When people get so used to seeing the many types of Hunter, and then they're like, what? Wait, dragons? They don't really oh, yeah. know how to react and how to adjust their play. So it, it could get you quite a few wins when people don't know what to do about it. Yeah, the only time they'll actually expect it is if your name's Kibler over there. Yeah, that's exactly. right. Yeah, it's like, what, like, oh, what, great. Now we what's know. the brew of the month dragon deck, Kibler? <laughs> um, I will say that there's a friend of mine that does, I think, some occasional hosting on um, Hearthcore podcasts or something like that. And then he also does Top Deck Kings. His name's Tell. He's actually a pretty repeat legend player. Pretty good repeat legend player. Yeah. He has a homebrew deck that he called Snakes and Drakes, which runs. Uh, in in the uh, before standard, it ran the you know double scientist with freezing traps and snake traps, and then you would get the snake traps on the board triggered, and then you would be able to trade in all of your snakes and kill something with you know a houndmaster if you drop it on the board. You can kill a bunch of stuff, make sure your drakes die, and then you can actually play two volcanic drakes in the same turn at zero cost. So I, that would be another additional card. I know it's an expensive card, but I think that that is something that you could test out with this list to outvalue. The problem nowadays with doing something like that is you can't cheat your mana cost anymore. <laughs> you can't like uh, you can't get your mad scientist to just pull that from your deck for you. Yeah, it does fill your deck with a little too much secrets. Yeah. Right. Most lists aren't running more than two secrets nowadays, if any. Yeah. You've got to make a choice. Scientist. <laughs> Rip scientist. It's like right. either explosive or freezing. Right. But I, all of that's really expensive. Dragons can be expensive sometimes, and I can mm -hmm. understand if people don't have Deathwing or anything, but hey, you know what they did get at the beginning of the standard? They got Cthulhu. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And here, I sure. got a budget Cthulhu deck for you. Okay. Whoa. For what class? It is a mage class Cthulhu deck. One of the first ones that I experimented with, 
a lot of people tried Priest. I saw a ton of Priest right at the beginning of Standards. Turns out that didn't quite work out well for them. No. (laughs) But uh, what we have here is two Arcane Missiles, two Mana Worm, two Cult Sorcerer, two Frostbolt, two Arcane Intellect, two Fireball, two Polymorph, two Faceless Summoner. We'll get back to him. He's cool. Flame Strike, one. Two Beckner of Evil, two Disciple of Cthune. We'll get back to him. He's cool, too. Uh, two Twilight Elder, two Cthune's Chosen, one Senjin Shield Master, or Taz Dingo, and uh, two Azure Drake, one Doomcaller, and your Cthune. This deck seems very tempo-oriented, but also in the idea that, hey, we're going to get to turn 10, and that's where you're going to die. <laughs> Yeah, this so, uh, this cult sorcerer is not to be underestimated either. That that is absolutely right because I've seen him played even without a Cthune. Yeah. He's just that good. Yeah. He is. That's when you know a card is too good when they play it and it's not a Cthune deck. <laughs> it's just <laughs> yeah, an auto include right. now in like mage decks. Period. Right. This is probably the most budget friendly deck we've talked about in a long time because the only legendary everyone got for free basically mm-hmm. yeah and and it's just commons and rares and i could see somebody maybe not having the cult sorcerer disciple of Cthune, doom caller if uh you know you didn't get those but man everything else there's no excuse to not have you know and really you could <laughs> You could replace those kind of with like Serum Cultists or I'm trying to think of what the other Cthune buffing cards are. I mean, those are kind of interchangeable. Uh, Twilight Geomancer, Crazy Worshipper. Um, you can even throw Twin. You want to throw Twin Emperor in, obviously, if you have him because yeah. dang value. Yeah. But and the, o- the only it, it's cool. To, it's cool to look at this and really see that anyone probably can make this deck, and it's probably going to have some good. You know, uh, stickiness on the ladder. I mean, what what was your experience playing it? I didn't get a chance to play this specific one, but I did manage to actually play my own, which is kind of very similar to this. One of the things I'd take note of is Twilight Elder. You'd really only want to put him in the deck if you have things that can actually defend him, like Mere Entity, or uh, not Mere Entity. What is the the one that drops two zero two taunts? Yeah, Mere yeah. Image. Your image, mirror that's image, it. That's Too many it. mirrors. But uh, Twilight Elder works really well if you can keep him on the board for at least three turns. That gives him more value than any of uh, the other Cthune minions, or at least just the same value when you consider Disciple of Cthune. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, getting that Cthune buffed is really, really, really easy. So like Andrew said, definitely... Uh, if you do have them, Twin Emperor Vecklor, really, really good in the deck if you can uh, get your Cthune up to 10 by turn 7, which is like 99% of the time. Oh, sure. <clears throat> yeah, I really think this deck is definitely geared for those budgets and those fun-minded players, but I think at the end of the day, there are extra options for you like to kind of scale out with this. You You definitely can... You know, you can throw in those twin emperors. You can, you know, you can cut one Twilight Elder for like a uh, Kabbalist Tome. You can cut a Doom Caller for, you know, something big. Like you can even just throw in a, a Yog Saran for a second bomb because you're playing a lot of spells. Um, there's there's all kinds of stuff that you can do with this list. I think at the end of the day, if you're looking to see like how you lose as opposed to how you win. How you lose is you kind of just lose tempo by playing minions that are vanilla buffing your end game and aren't really like finishing it off, as it were. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you kind of play the Twilight Elder, you play the Beckoner, and they don't really do anything uh, until the end game. They just do their thing, and that's kind of it. <laughs> right. And to, to just remember, take note that after turn six, that's when you're going to start seeing where your value truly comes into place. You need right. to really meter yourself out from turn one to five. Yeah. I will say that Cthune's Chosen kind of helps counter, counteract that a little bit because it is very sticky. And then the Disciple of Cthune, if you can kind of just like maintain the board with him, that usually helps. 
<clears throat> Kassoon's Chosen, that's the 4-2 with Divine Shield? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's like the most annoying to remove thing in the game right now. Yeah, it kind of is. Priests I cannot deal with it because it's way. got four attack. Oh, yeah. I heard somebody explain Divine Shield that it's like a Sludge Belcher-ish effect. That you've got a 4-1 whose death rattle is a 4-2. Yeah. And when I thought about it that way, it's like, wow, that's like crazy stats. You know? And I think yeah. that, that explains why it's a little bit harder to deal with because that's kind of what you're having to do. Yeah. The only thing you can get rid of it is with destroy effects because they just ignore the divine shield. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, it's super hard. And I wonder if they really thought to put it at the four because otherwise it would be super easy to remove for a priest. The other because thing it's you at can... the four attack, you just yeah. can't. The other thing you could consider is like how I said Twilight Elder is definitely something you can think about getting rid of depending on how your games are going. You could actually replace him with a uh, Bram Bronzebeard and then Disciple of Cthulhu deals with Cthulhu's oh, yeah. Chosens in the mirror match, no, no matter what. Yeah. Pops the brain shield is a really good inclusion, yeah. Yeah. Brain shield is insane, because you're dealing with Cthulhu plus four plus four. Like, that alone is, like, worth the stats. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, Jamie, is there anything else you want to talk through this deck list or uh, kind of options with it? Or do you want to move on to some other stuff that you want to talk about for the show? I think this deck list is pretty self-explanatory. You just get that tempo damage in and make Cthulhu do work for you. So like we it. can go ahead and move on. Which he does. <laughs> All right. So, again, we don't have – there's not really any news aside from one thing. Um, so I guess we, we'll go ahead and play the bumper for news, and then we'll move on from there. Alright, so the first and only bit of news is that Crip has broken the record for Arena uh, runs in 10. I, is that right? I don't remember how you said Wait, it. Wait, I... I... I think you said it wrong, Rob. Crip broke arena. I think that's what you meant to say. <laughs> <laughs> like the entire game mode. Crip okay, so we all want to know what class was he playing? He was playing. I the, it was all of them. All of them, yeah. I mean, when he won. When he won the last one. When he went over. Oh, <laughs> Jamie, I'm not sure. Jamie, uh, why don't you explain uh, what happened for this one? <laughs> uh, for this one there was so many runs like I saw it on reddit and several times it's like oh Crips at 6 Crips at 7, Crips at 9, Crips at 10 and I'm just like okay what is he doing I'm trying to find what different classes he's going in arena for because I'm like yeah I, I want gold I want dust this seems like <laughs> a good thing to watch <laughs> yep. and he just went through every class and got all of his wins Wow. It just kept falling in place for him. And I wish I had this good of an arena draft. <laughs> <laughs> and but then he went out and bought a lottery ticket. Oh, no. And then the lottery <laughs> ticket turns out that was his loss. That was the one loss he got. Sudo, do you play much uh, much arena or have you lately since uh, since Whispers? Uh, I've played a few arena runs every time I get grumpy because I'm 0-3, but <laughs> that's, uh, that's, oh, that's arena for you. It's pretty rough out there right now. Yeah, you either it's have so much the best or the worst. Yeah, that's what it feels like. I think before you were here, you amazing decks. I'm trying to find that for that um, Crip stuff. He like uploaded a um, an image of all of the decks that he drafted, but I remember reading that for this challenge you have to have like you do ten runs of arena, and then if you're familiar with arena, you get presented with three classes. <clears throat> so if you get like shaman, mage, druid, you can pick any of them for your first pick. So let's say I pick druid mm -hmm. right away or mage because mage is freaking busted. So you, you pick mage, and then you go X wins. So I get, like, 10 wins with mage. 
on my next run, if I see Mage, Druid, or Shaman again, I can't pick Mage. I have to pick something else. So every class that you play as, you can't pick again unless all three options are classes that you've already played. So in theory, the best way to win at the challenge of getting over 100 wins in Arena in 10 runs is to be presented with Rogue, Paladin, Mage every time. Because <laughs> yes. you just get to play <laughs> the top three classes every game for 10 in a row. And that's how most of them have been for a lot of players. They just play Rogue and win, and they get a good draft. So to, that's kind of the establishment point, but Crip has gotten seemingly un unattainable levels of good in his arenas like he's got like <laughs> 109 wins in nine runs or 102 in nine or something like that and then like yes. finally but there's his last skill game. like it's not just straight up luck you really need to know what to pick and yeah there's a lot of skill involved in it it's, it's not just, just a reminder six fireballs <laughs> It's just a reminder that if you want to get better at Arena, watch the pros and watch Crip, especially, because <laughs> what he's thinking is key. Like, he's correct in the way he's thinking. The way you're thinking in Arena is incorrect. The way I'm thinking in Arena is incorrect. <laughs> I haven't busted three wins since. So I need to spend yes. some more time watching him to get better. It's been a while since I yeah. got three wins. And this rule set is entirely self-imposed by arena uh, arena players. You don't have to run this rule set, but it's definitely right, a nice right. challenge for you to go, go ahead and yeah. see how much you've learned from arena. Yep. Yeah, th this is for people who like get 12 wins every time. They're like, I need something harder. I'm done playing <laughs> need more Mage of a and 12 winning every day of my life. <laughs> It's like those people who play games and go, I'm never going to die. And if I die, I have to restart from the beginning again, you know? Yeah. It's like Dark Souls for Arena. Yes. <laughs> Dark Souls Arena. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. You must instantly concede. All right. So let's go into Jamie's speculation segment. Lovely speculation. <laughs> um, it's getting along now. I know it's been very short since the release it's only been since late april since we had whispers but we are moving on into summer and at the end of summer i am expecting some kind of news some kind of leak even to the next adventure that we're going to probably get, be getting here as uh, blizzard had said before their structure for each year is going to be set adventure set so Here's hoping we have something we have at the end of the summer, but I want to get your take on it. Is uh, the shift in the meta? What what would it take to shift the meta out of an out of these uh, adventures? Like we know, League of Explorers did a very particular shift in the meta in the fact that it got some good cards and it got Reno Jackson there to say, Reno Jackson, you know, yeah, Agro, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think also, aside from Next Ramos, League of Explorers was the was next most impactful set just from the nature of, if you look at all of the legendaries, I think Rafama is the only one that's just seen niche play, whereas the other, other yeah. legendaries oh, yeah. have seen all competitive play. Yeah, and that also yeah. brings up the question is, would you rather see a raid be recreated, or would you just rather see something like League of Explorers come back, where it was something new, fresh, and different? Well, I'm going to make a prediction right now that just because Legion is coming out in Warcraft, and the Warcraft movie is coming out, that they might be doing something original, but themed, like that? I mean, they don't have anything like Duratan or Blackhand in the game, right? They just have Rend, which is from Warlords of Draenor. He's not even from the universe that Legion or the movie set in, right? Duratan's like but when Thrall was a, a baby. <laughs> like, that's when Duratan <laughs> was around. Because Legion is kind of like, you know, um, lots of fell energies and demons and demons hunters. and hunters and fun stuff like that but it's also kind of dark and they did just kind of do a dark one 
Yeah. Like Whispers of the Old Gods is pretty much the darkest that Hearthstone has been, even though it's cute, funny dark. So they might kind of want to go, you know what, let's change it up and make something light and funny like League of Explorers was and like the Grand Tournament was and stuff so it doesn't get too dark. It would make sense if they were trying to tie it into the whole Blizzard universe of what's going on right now to kind of go for Legion, like Mm -hmm. Fell and and Demons and stuff, but maybe they want to stick to something a bit happier. Uh, I'm no expert on WoW lore at all. I haven't played (laughs) WoW ever. I'm sorry for those that did Uh and are right now yelling at me like, you should play WoW. (laughs) There's a lot of Hearthstone players that have never even tried. Yeah, but my question is, was Illidan wasn't always evil, right? Right. Right. So, in fact, there are some people who believe he was never evil. Yep. <laughs> so, that are kind of like rooting for Illidan. <laughs> maybe we get like an adventure that is kind of like Illidan's sort of uh, path to evil, path to the dark side, oh, that uh, will give us a new usable Illidan legendary. Perhaps. I mean, I mean, we know that. <laughs> oh, oh, not oh! A... What's what's her name? What's her name? Rob? Would that not be awesome to have her as a legendary? My Shadow Song. Yes, My Shadow Song. Amazing, well, amazing. There uh, is, elf. There is who some... trapped him and put him in prison for what ten thousand years? She's okay. a super awesome character. So My Shadow Song made it into that really weird, like data mined <laughs> list of things that they got in patch notes. For she was going to be an alternate hero. Yeah, Rogue, that's right. Yeah. Oh, I'd rather see her as a legendary, honestly, than an alternate hero. Well, yeah, who knows? Rag became a Cat hero Girl. and a card and a light lord, so <laughs> anything's possible. Yeah, we know that Hearthstone doesn't mean any like ill will, but they yeah. are not afraid of ruffling lore feathers at all. <laughs> yes, they they now, stood I'm up not... for their decision very strongly. <laughs> yes. Now, I want to give my speculation, and I want to say it in the hum- most humble way possible, that I know I'm right. So, <laughs> there's that. This is starting off well. I like it. Go all on. Right, all right. You may begin. Wow. <laughs> and then Andrew freezes. Oh, and like then he Andrew drops the call. the call. Oh, dear. Okay. So, oh Jamie, gosh. what do you think's coming? We try oh, to get I think back? that... Uh, I'm thinking that there's the possibility of a fresh new take on uh, something very uh, original again, but also tied to lore, like Eve had said, which is, uh, you know, something very demon-esque. I feel like Warlock has been getting the shaft a little bit just because, you know, the only archetype we see out of them is Zoo. And I'm kind of sick of that. Well, they have and before that, it was Handlock, too. Handlock and Zoo. But yeah, that's yeah. It could be, and that's the thing that I was thinking is if there's a bunch of demons in the next one, that really does speak to Zoo a lot. So I, have they really had an expansion that really spoke to one class more than anything else? Well, this one was Shaman. Let me tell you. The other thing yeah, but Shaman is, was good before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I really want them to do yeah, something I've, for priests. Like I'm, I'm swinging like the opposite direction that you guys are saying, Jamie and Eve, like with demons and stuff. I'm thinking they should do something more of like uh, angels. I guess the uh, the, no the combat, the scourge movement, of, like uh, Tyrion, where they have the hard, the Argent Crusade, um, fighting against, or maybe like some hybrid of evil and good with like the Scarlet Crusade, where they have like the the whole area where they have like three or four different dungeons in Warcraft where the Scarlet Crusade is like meant to be holy but they're like corrupted by their own because I think they split in the lore the Scarlet Crusade is something I think it sounds a little too much like the Grand Tournament you know yeah but priests need some love man priest sucks (laughs) yeah priest is in kind of a harsh position but that's not to say that the new adventure wouldn't give them an AOE spell again to actually yeah. bring them back into the fold. God I mean, bless, Doomsayer is still out again. there. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, I play a lot of Dragon Priest, and I find it really strong. The other thing is, they knew the nerfs were incoming for Druid. They knew these things were coming down the yeah. line, and to have very 
kind of druid centric rebuffer for them to actually give them an archetype that isn't just well they're beasts yeah <laughs> yeah i think druid is doing pretty well it's not like crazy combo druid anymore but they're doing pretty well on ladder i think yeah i, I would disagree with that <laughs> would you would you know? i mean have you I, been trying I, to play druid recently no, but I mean, they come in on tier three, I think, at top on the meta report. I and I did run into one yesterday that was like this insane ramp druid. And by insane, I mean on turn four they had nine mana crystals. Oh my! Like, and and then they got a Sogoth the Slitherer down, and then they got Yasharaj down, and you literally can't do anything against that all of a sudden. So. If you, if you get the right draws and stuff, it's good. But I think there's a lot of room for them to improve which kind of decks are viable with, with Druid, especially. All right, so since I think Andrew's it's possible back, that anything that you make out of Druid, people are just mentally going to compare to combo Druid, and it's going to seem weak in comparison. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's this combo was so good. But we just need yeah, to... Yeah. All right, Andrew, what was your theory just need before to, you, uh, you bust give here? Give some time. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. So, because this really is a big deal. I was trying to say that in the most humble way possible, I know that I'm right about what's coming out this year. So, check this out. Year of the Kraken, right? Right. That's what that's what we're in. And I haven't heard anybody talking about this, but what does a Kraken have? Tentacles. Tentacles. Crack. Which goes with Whispers of the Old Gods, right? Right. Where do Krakens live? In the sea. So Sky. if we had a pirate expansion that was that really would be focused awesome. on ice things, <laughs> that would be a lot of fun and a very different taste from Whispers, and it would still be in line with the Kraken stuff. It so would still be I, fun, it would ninjas? still be light yeah. and hearthstone -y. I like they, where you're going. They released a picture a while back on their Facebook, I think maybe we talked about it once, that was like everybody playing Hearthstone on a ship. And I thought that meant for sure that we were going to get a pirate expand, or you know, something high seas related. And I think now more than ever, it just makes well, sense. Well, they did to, to add a bunch of pirates, expansion. though, right? We we got like yeah, three but, or four. No, but not an expansion. But not an expansion. Yeah. yeah. I, I was. I, you can do a whole expansion of seas and you know uh, stuff like that. So I mean, I could see that in an expansion, but as I'm far expecting as an something adventure along. is concerned, like. They oh no, yeah, that sounds super fun. You know what work. they did with like a minecart in League of Explorers? You know what they could uh, do with boats in the sea? Yeah, they could that swim. Super they fun. could just call it like the Maelstrom Adventure or something like that, where you have to like go into the the high seas and rescue the goblins and then you find I think them. the Maelstrom speaks to World of Warcraft players, but it's kind of for anyone who didn't play World yeah. of Warcraft, so they might have to find something a little more that tracks better. But I, I really like that idea. The only reason I don't think it might happen is because they already gave us a bunch of pirates. Mm. All right, I got so, it. All right, Jamie, what laid on? You us. got it. What? Discover a coordinate. E five. I sunk your battleship. <laughs> 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 oh, They're gonna make a lane command uh, version of Hearthstone. Me <laughs> <be> Starcraft. With... <laughs> oh gosh. They're gonna make boats. You'd be like, I'm on a boat. <laughs> yes. Oh, dear. All right, you can all only right. attack boats if you two are on a boat. There's only so much speculation <laughs> that I can handle, you guys. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> I like right. the idea of Pirates in the Seas, though. I think the Kraken name really works well for this year. And it works both ways. It would work in the Whispers with the tentacles and the creepiness, but it would also work in like a High Seas Pirates-themed sure. thing as well. So I like it. All right. <laughs> What's next on the right. market? So what we got now is, uh, we well, we've been talking pirates. I've seen them out there. How do you want to start next month? Do you want to start out on the high seas? Do you want to start out on the land? How do people want to get started on the next month for Hearthstone? Now that we have seen the filtered out choices of particularly Rogue, Shaman, all these things out on the ladder, how do we want to get in there, ruffle their meta feathers? Well, I'll tell you, figuring out how to play Temple Warrior is probably going to be your best bet, because at the beginning of the at the beginning of the month, you want to play something that has that's really strong, but also plays relatively quickly. And from what I've seen, Temple Warrior is really good against the Shaman varieties yeah. and against Zoo. So you've got a really high chance of 
of countering those aggro shaman and zoo players, which that's just going to, you know, at the beginning of the meta or beginning of the month, you're going to have a ton of that. So I would say that that's probably a really strong deck to consider. You remember that warrior taunt with enrage that we all thought was crap and is now being played in like every warrior deck? Super good against aggro shaman. Yeah. Blood Hoof Brave. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> does that cost four to place down right? Yeah. Yes, it does. Infuriating yeah. to come up against with Aggro Shaman. Hey, that's where Priest comes in. There you go, Rob. Play Shadow uh, Pain. I'm not yep. going to play Priest. Priest anymore. deals with Warrior very well. <laughs> no, they I, pick I tried priest. so many Priest decks. I don't think you understand when World, uh, when Wrath of the Old or whatever, <laughs> freaking Old Gods came out. I played <laughs> so much priest. I played Nazoth priest. I played burst priest. I played Im- double embrace the shadow with double corrupted healbot priest. Did you play dragon priest? I played dragon priest, which was the super top heavy one. I played the mid range one, and I couldn't win. I dropped all the way to twenty. So I got I'm up to rank eleven. The shaman hype train because I played mid range shaman <laughs> and got on a win streak, and I went from. Was it 14 all the way up to 10 in like an hour? <laughs> it was like yeah, super that's easy. Good. And the best you know highlight our- was, was playing Primal Infusion to keep one of my totems sticky and totem up the same turn. And then the next turn, Bloodlust and burst them for like 28. It was awesome. <laughs> wow. Um, oh, my brain just blank- went blank. It was going to say something shaman. that I forgot. Go ahead. Shaman or Priest. All right. I think you yeah. just didn't pray enough for priest, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. oh, dear. You know, it's funny, though. You think back to a few months ago, Shaman was like the bottom of the barrel, right? I mean, before uh, before Tunnel Trog, especially, the aggro Shaman didn't even exist. And they put some tools now to make Shaman, mid-range especially, the top-tier deck possible. So I think, like, priest really hasn't ever been the deck to play. And I bet that we're going to see some kind of evolution in the next, you know, year where Priest becomes a really high, you know, yeah, high, highly Ooh. played deck. Yeah, you take it does well for pass. me against a lot of different matchups. Honestly, it, it's it's a good deck. It got me up to like, well, that and Agro Shaman got me up to like rank nine. Yeah, you take a look at the past and you see how the cycle goes. It's like Paladin used to be garbage and then they started getting things and they kept on getting things until you had Dr. Six that before Standard. And mm-hmm. now afterward, we get into new Standard and Agro Shaman seems to be the thing. It's just like a- Shaman used to be garbage, then they got Tunnel Tronk and now they got uh, Dr. Four, as people call him. Mm-hmm. So... It's just going to keep cycling out who's the best. You just got to keep your finger on the button as to who's going to be the cream of the crop. Oh, I remembered what I was going to say, is that when I play at 4 o'clock in the morning, I play against way different people than I do during the day. (laughs) I found it a lot easier to rank up when I'm playing at 4 o'clock in the morning. Playing against all those Asian players trying to ladder up from Japan. Well, I just... Yeah, (laughs) honestly, I... I, I gotta say, like, people have asked us before on the show whether we find it easier to rank up at different times during the day. And when everyone is asleep, it just seems a lot easier. I go on win streaks. Don't play arena during the day. And then I start day. playing in the day and fall <laughs> right back down. There you go. <laughs> I played but arena yeah. during the the afternoon when I'm at work and I'm, like, a couple hours from finishing. So, like, between 1 o'clock and 5 o'clock and I just get smashed in arena, like... Man, <laughs> turn five death from rogues is just not fun. But well, no. I work graveyard shift from midnight until eight o'clock in the morning. And if I play around three or four o'clock in the morning, it's like there's nobody. Or, I mean, there's or nobody everybody good. is like zombie mode trying to keep playing and you're just like. <laughs> Maybe that's them. it. Maybe yeah, that's, that's it. Right. But it seems really like easy to rank up. Yeah. In the middle of the night. I don't know why. <laughs> so yeah, I think I think uh so Andrew's recommendation is like some sort of tempo warrior. Eve is saying what are you what are you saying? You're gonna go back to your, your guts and go with the priest with Deathwing? I, I go with priest and then I go to Agro Shaman. So that's that's my wheelhouse. I go back and forth between yeah. the two. 
because Priest just has so much removal of tough to remove minions, and it has so much end game that if I'm going up against slower decks, I generally do really well. Gotcha. Okay. So, um, Jamie, what are you going to play? Wait, wait, wait. Pseudo, what are you going to play? Yeah. (laughs) What am I going to play? Oh, I got one for you. It's uh, Reno Cthulhu. I love oh, yeah. Cthulhu. It's been it's been my bread and butter, and even though it keeps me in the same place forever, it <laughs> is fun to play, and makes Agro decks cry. And this I love is a it. warlock <laughs> list, right? I think Agro decks do hate you. Reno with a passion. <laughs> yeah, me and Rob worked on that list for a little bit, and we managed to get it to work work was, well. You know, what was that uses really Cho-Gall. weird card that we teched in there. Chogall, really? Oh. What do you do with Chogall? Hmm. Uh, drop Chogall on turn seven, and Shadow you can flame. cast a either Shadow Flame to clear the board, or if there's a big threat over there, just use Siphon Soul for six. You only lose three life, and you gain a ton of tempo. And then the next turn, if Chogall's still alive, just drop a Veckler, Twin Emperor Veckler. Yep. And uh, the main thing is you drop on turn ten uh, Bram Bronzebeard and uh, Twin Emperor Veckler, and yeah. you got protection for days. <laughs> yep, that's how, it, uh, that's how it works. Now, Jamie and I had put in a lot of seemingly bad cards in this list just to survive against certain archetypes. What were some of those really weird cards that we were looking at? Oh, let's remember? see here. Oh, I, have, I haven't looked at the list for a while. Let I know we, go put ahead a, and pull we, we like put a Cult Apothecary in there, didn't we? Yeah, we were looking heal. at Cult Apothecary. Oh, nice. But if yeah. you take a look at some of the, some of the Reno decks that you've seen in some of the tournaments, people are using Cult Apothecary to great advantage. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. We don't have a lot of great healing options, and that's one that can be a huge swing card. I mean... Especially if you plan on wiping the board right afterward, yeah. Uh-huh. We might have put so a uh, Disciple mm-hmm. of Cthune, which is... Or no, not Disciple of Cthune. What am I thinking? It's the guy with the, the dwarf with the fire whip. That's a 3-6 taunt for 5. Praise Worshipper. Yeah, that boss him every time it takes damage. Praise Worshipper. Yeah. Yeah, that's another dude that's really, really been oh, pulling cool. his weight. One that I haven't seen as often that I think people should really consider for a deck like this is Usher of Souls. Even if you don't get it to activate that often, it's still a 5 6 that they have to deal with. Now, that, that's it's the Usher card that gives you Cthune charges when one of your allied minions dies, and it's a big body for 5 mana. So it's basically right. like you're playing a pit fighter. It's a pit fighter with a, yeah, with an upsell. Yeah, combine that with like a, uh, a forbidden ritual on turn five if you had nothing to play, and then Usher of Souls can get you a huge neck yeah. game on your Cthulhu. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. You know, so, I don't think I have that card. I think it's a common. It is a common. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty not bad. I don't know if that's the is Usher of Souls the right card text or is it. I don't even remember what the uh, card's yeah. name is, to be honest. Yeah, it's, it's Usher Whenever Souls. a friendly minion dies. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. It's pretty interesting. definitely not warlocks one I've there. seen played. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Unless there's Zoo, then there's a lot of warlocks out there. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, Zoo yeah. is so good that people aren't choosing anything else, but that's intriguing. Right. I'd like to try that deck out. Oh, yeah, I can uh, get you guys a uh, screenshot and then a uh, a link for it to put in the show notes for anyone. That's yeah, awesome. We'll put it, we'll put I a link try it out. Or you can share it in Discord. Let us, let us see it there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Thing we have Warlock, one more uh, big topic that you wanted to talk through about uh, some of the card nerfs, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a big topic. It's a big, big topic. In fact, you could say it's gigantic. <laughs> Oh, that is I an see what you did there. Pun. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> we just become best friends. <laughs> so let's oh, talk about our dear friend Molten Giant, who has oh. suffered quite a bit from that nerf and made Handlock practically unusable, at least from a ladder standpoint. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd agree with that. So. Let's let's see here. Giants have always been like this thing that Big Game Hunter was created for. Now that he's no longer there, 
or at least he's five mana, you'd think you'd see some of the other giants, but the only one we've seen so far is Sea Giant. Mm-hmm. So what do you guys think? Is there any way to get these other giants to work? Is Sea Giant just going to be the new Molten Giant? Do you hope for other giants to come in and actually do some work? Well, here's, one, here's something interesting. I actually ran into a handlock, uh, I think a couple days ago, on the ladder, and it was really jolting because I was like, wait, what? You're playing handlock at rank 5? That's not supposed to be the case. Um, and he, <laughs> instead of Molten Giants, he was running Frost Giants, which back when Frost Giant came out, we wondered if it would replace uh, M- Mountain Giants or something in Handlock. And, of course, it couldn't because Molten Giant was just and Mountain Giant are way more reliable. But now that Molten Giant is so hard to pull off, I think Frost Giant is a, is a pretty good uh, um, replacement because he gets he gets less for each time you or less costy for each time you use your hero power, and with handlock you do a lot of drawing. So you can probably easily get them down to at least a six cost, which is decent. Um, so I think that that's probably the most likely substitute, but man, it's just tough to pull off now. Although I will say that the Shadow Flamed Ancient Watcher is a great AoE removal. Uh, for any Zulok or Agro Shaman, because <laughs> he he played that Ancient Watcher against me, and I was like, oh, I forgot about this. This is like super duper powerful. So yeah, I was gonna say exactly what Andrew said. To be honest, like Frost Giant is kind of just what happens. The the biggest issue with Handlock now is actually not just the fact that they got hit in that respect, but they also lost Healbot. They also lost. A two mana silence yeah. so on turn four they can't just um or not on turn four i'm sorry on turn five they can't just have like an ancient watcher on the board and then they can like owl it and play something else and punch you in the face for four as easily because you know silence is a lot harder to come by so they're running i never really saw it used that way anyway like they just aldo or not aldo it up but uh taunt it up is what they would use it against me as I never yeah, really saw it a lot of times we anyway. use the taunt or the shadow flame, but I mean, there's been a lot of lethals that I've been watching um, from basically Nax era, where you would run one or two owls to silence your own minions to punch them in the face for that extra bit of four damage burst and win games with it. Um, they also ran rag for the same reason; they could silence rag and get a targeted eight damage uh, attack. So they ran lots of silences. I think they were even in the Reno list was running Owl and Spellbreaker because they wanted it. The one thing that I find is really weird for Reno lists and Handlock lists is they are running the Acidic Swamp Ooze in place of Harrison. I think because of the five mana, six mana slot just too clogged. I mean, I, I don't know, but it seems like Harrison. Well, and also off. Harrison, if you if you Harrison a Doom. Hammer, sometimes you overdraw. Yeah, there right. is that. And they, they do draw a lot on their own, so maybe that's the logic. Yeah, once you get to a certain point, if you're against a control matchup or something, then you're going to hose yeah. yourself if you use Harrison. Yep. Yep. The that's other thing I was it. trying to experiment with with that handlock is uh, I haven't gotten around to actually experimenting with it more than just theorizing about it. And it happened in my renal lock, uh, it was the Power Overwhelming plus Faceless Shambler. I got rid of it after a little bit because there was just a lot of sap going on from Rogue. Oh, but yes. The Faceless Shambler is actually not that bad when you can Power Overwhelming something that's at least like even a 2-2 and you get a 6-6 six, six taunt for 5 Four. mana. Yeah, for five. You know, I do remember seeing that in that handlock that I went up against, too. I, you know... You play it, even if you taunt it up a, uh, an Ancient Watcher, play it based off that, and you've got a 4-5 four, for 4 with taunt, which is a good deal. But isn't that kind of the same as that, um, that other Warlock card that would destroy the minions to either side of it and take their health and their attack? Uh, Terror, except you don't kill the cheaper. two minions. <laughs> yeah, but if you power overwhelming it, it's going to die anyway at the end of the turn. Is my point. Right. The the idea is that the, between the Void Terror and the Power Overwhelming, at least with the Power Overwhelming, you can use that creature that you Power Overwhelming to trade up and then you 
well, first you want to play the Shambler to make sure the stats are fine. Right. Then yeah. you trade up, and then there's nothing over there on the other side of the board that would really just you deny you this huge minion. Yeah. Yeah. I think the real reason. Right. I just mean like usually for me, if I use Power of Overwhelming, the uh, the creature lives at the end of the turn anyway. Right. Because you put it on something and it like the plus four plus four usually gives you enough health for it or it survives the turn anyway. But you're right. That is better to drop it before you even attack with it, get the full stats and then Yeah, and then the yeah. Cthulhu yeah. whenever you're up you against. usually are being able to play like uh let's say you have that uh crazed worshipper on the board and he's like, I don't know, a three two because he got attacked twice and your opponent's about to kill him. So you go to your next turn, you play Power Overwhelming on your Crazed Worshipper, it goes up to a 7-6, and then you punch something and kill it, and or hit your opponent in the dome, and then you just play your, uh, your Faceless Shambler, and you have that same size minion, and now it has Taunt, and you're like, Ugh, <laughs> how do I get through this? <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's not even mentioned in the Reno lock, that the Reno Cthulhu I was doing you also still have twin emperor vecler to get through after that fact so yeah. there's a lot of talk going Tons on in that deck yep. i wish that that like card it. was better suited for druid you know what i mean like druid really wants to have that taunt druid archetype back with the ramp but they just can't seem to get the faceless shambler to really work well for them because if something sticks on the board it's usually just gonna die Soon. Yeah, I keep forgetting that that I'll tell you one, what, that, one. That, that, Oops, go ahead. Hello. I think I don't know the, what which one one? Oh Andrew? I was I was just gonna say that I keep forgetting that that one one that the druid got out of the class thing that was kinda quote unquote forbidden. It doesn't have taunt, but it is a huge dude when you play him. <laughs> forbidden yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he can be. I, I will say that the ramp druid that I ran into that just wrecked me, um, he was playing like every taunt imaginable. So Bog Creeper, so got the Slitherer, all those kind of things that like uh, you could face the Chamber, any of those, and be totally fine. So I think, and I think with Yasharaj, obviously, you know, pulling those taunts out for free is just stupid. You don't want the faceless shambler to be, be pulled out. That's the one day time of running it, but yeah. it could work in that in that deck. Yep. I I also it's agree. interesting. So, Eve, would you would you throw this in your priest deck? That's what I'm actually curious about. Kathen, or no, faceless shambler. The shambler, yeah. No. Because I'm trying to think of, like, if you can play... Because normally with, with your deck, you're, you're like, losing tempo, right? Like, you'll play your 3-6 because it has the enabled, you know, the huge dragon. Or you have a bigger bodied minion that you drop on curve. Whereas the Faceless Shambler, you kind of need to have something that sticks and is healed. And then you can play it. Something like that. Yeah. And, uh, I can't think of a turn where I would want to do that, honestly. Right, right. Yeah, it wouldn't work out in Priest that well, I so don't think. Like but I, the idea definitely... in um, Warlock sounds really good. It sounds like they have a lot of things that they could make work well with that card. Yeah, it's hard to think through. When I think just with how many options you have, especially with the Reno variant, you're running mm. so many different cards that you've got several different choices and probably one of those is at least going to give you some kind of value you know mm -hmm. even if it's just a crazed worshiper getting a three six on for four is still you know a mana off so that's good yeah yeah something that kind of throws um a stick into the reno wheel is that new thing that rogue has been running recently what is it unearth unearth raptor no, the one where they throw three cards into your deck, and when yeah, they come yeah. up, they oh. give them the four fours. No, no. Uh, um, Beneath the grounds. Oh yeah. Beneath the grounds. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of my new favorite, <laughs> not new favorites. I've always loved that card. 
Yeah, that really screws up Reno. Because then they have doubles in their deck and they can't use him. Unless all yeah. three of those cards come out. Or two of them. Oh, if two of the cards come out, then <laughs> they're good. And you don't want the cards to come out because that's too good for Rogue. Yeah. Did we lose Sudo? No, he had to okay. calm Go. some things down in the background. So. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I have uh, dogs to put in the dog Dogs cave. are silly sometimes. All right, so I have and a question. Who knows? <laughs> let's let's do our our final section of the show here as we wrap up. Um, just I I think each one of us should ask Pseudo a question, like just randomly, like what do you what do you ask Uh-oh. Pseudo section since he's the patron. <laughs> all right, mm. all right, I got a question, like, Pseudo. Okay. What is your favorite fun card? My favorite fun card, huh? Like something you know might not actually be that great of a card, but it's just so fun. You want to put it in a deck. You want to make it work. Well, I do. I do like a lot of the fun cards, but I think my recent favorite has to be Yogg-Saron. It's just so fun to see all those spells go off and watch the board wipe itself eight times. <laughs> <laughs> flame strike! Flame strike! Flame strike! Hellfire. Vanish and then equality and oh dear. Yeah, you can get dogs on off multiple times. It's fantastic. Shadow step. <laughs> oh dear. All right, Andrew. Assassinate himself. My question is what's your least favorite class to play against? Oh I'll play against I think I know oh, what dear. he's gonna say. <laughs> oh I, the cop out answer is of course agro shaman, right? <laughs> Yes. But sure. I'd have to say the worst class I can play against right about right now is just the most milkshakiest priest. <laughs> Which steals all your stuff and beats you in the face with it. Yeah, I just Entomb enrages me so much. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. I feel bad when I do it to people. Yeah, for a second. I don't. <laughs> I wish I had the sorry button back just so I could. Yes. Play. <laughs> Gosh, I miss that sorry button. All right, so oh. m- my question is going to be, uh, Jamie, how how um, how do you enjoy Hearthstone? Like, this is a little bit more of a broad brush question, but like, how is it that you find enjoyment from the game? I find enjoyment from the game through uh, you know, climbing ladder with out of meta decks. You know, just uh. Having that thing that people go like, "Ooh, what's that?" And just <laughs> <A stone> go, <laughs> yeah, kind of how our how our deck sig- our budget deck segment want, you know, climbing the ladder with Dragon Hunter can really make people poop their pants. <laughs> <laughs> you're that guy where you go He's, up against them and you're mentally going, "Oh, I know exactly what he's going to play," and then the first card is like, "What?" One of my right. favorite uh, deck creators is Jackie Chan. Who just oh, creates yeah. these? I didn't know he played Hearthstone. <laughs> <laughs> he just makes these out of the wall, just undiscovered decks from nowhere, and just a, gets up the ladder with it. And I'm just like, this is great. This is where Camel Hunter came from. This is where Egg Druid came from. This is he's my man. I love him. He's made some awesome. funky stuff. Yeah, he's. And he's he's follow that guy story. apparently. So uh, again, this week, guys. It's been really great. We are still doing the normal show on Friday, so tune in for that. Uh, we're glad to have Jamie here with us for this Monday. Uh, happy Memorial Day to our American listeners. Uh, we're enjoying the holiday here in the States. Um, thank you again, Jamie, for your generous donations and just ha- coming and hanging for with real. us, man. It's been a huge oh, yeah, no help problem. to us. And then uh, I just want to say thank you already for the great emails that we've gotten because we did send out like a request to give us a bunch of emails and we've already got a great couple. So thank you for responding so quickly. Absolutely. And if you guys have been listening to the show for any stretch of time, um, every once in a while, it's like every other show from the early shows. It's like, oh, we have another email from Jamie S. And like. I don't know, a good 20 minutes a segment uh, per show for a long time has been dedicated from Jamie. So it's been really helpful to have him uh, as a part of the honorary team for such a long time. And other honorary members on our Patreon is Kelvin, Croven B, Ricardo C, John H, Pratap N, Gabriel Z, Garrett S, and Jeffrey W. Thank you guys on Patreon for supporting us. 
we have some cool stuff coming and you are making this show possible in every way to becoming better. Um, what are some other ways that we can get involved in the show? Jamie, you've been getting involved with the show in a lot of other ways. So why don't you let the listeners know how they can get involved as a listener? As a listener, you can always follow and get involved with the show on Twitter, uh, Valen's Podcast Twitter. You can go to the Facebook at Velen Chosen's Podcast. You can email Velen Chosen at Velen Chosen Podcast at gmail.com. You can go support them on Patreon at Velen's Chosen. You can go to their YouTube channel, which has a bunch of numbers that I can't read, but I'm assuming it's <laughs> Velen's Chosen. It's just in the show notes. <laughs> you should search for it, yeah. <laughs> you better search for it. It's great. Twitch, you can check out Rob on Twitch, at not Rob May. Uh, you can check out the website at VelenChosen.com. Very lovely website. Uh, Discord, you can join the Discord for Velen's Chosen. It should be out there. Uh, iTunes, uh, you can check it out on iTunes. Don't forget to leave a five-star review because these guys are awesome and they need it. Get them involved with everyone. <laughs> and you can check them out on RSS and Stitcher. And they also have their eSports hero code still valid. It's Velen's Chosen 15. So make sure you go out there and support eSports hero. <laughs> Jamie is that the was awesome. one sellout of the day. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> was awesome. I, I just want to say one more thing. I can't believe that we went this whole show without talking about Overwatch one time. <laughs> oh, dear. It's, it's just on your brain that much. Actually. I'm proud of you, Rob. I've been playing with Jamie like nonstop the last weekend and a half. Like, geez. Gets us right, so uh, mad. What's that? Gets us so mad. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is the portion of the show that Jamie has probably heard a thousand times. It's just like all of the, hey, where can you find the show? Da, 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 da. He probably has it memorized at this point. So... <laughs> Um, just Probably. another special thanks for Watchman HS for making our amazing intro and outro. Andrew's got some more correlation with him this week on bumpers that are coming. It's so close. He's got some cool ideas he's been working on for us. That being said, they let's, can't uh, come soon enough. Let's uh, let's do the close of the show and figure out where you can find each individual host, starting with Andrew. Because it all starts with Andrew. It all starts with a. I don't know what that, that means. <laughs> I'm on Twitter, Andrew's Living, Twitch, Andrew's Living, YouTube, Banaka Freak, and add me on Battle.net, Andrew's Live, number 1973. All right, Eve, you're up next. I'm all the places. If you want to find me, I'm sure you can find me. <laughs> wow. That's, that's possible. Diff. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, you can find me over at uh, Twitter at not Rob, Facebook at not Rob Media. You can listen to the Overwatch podcast that has been a lot of fun to produce at OmnicLab.com and we're also on iTunes and Stitcher and Google whatever stuff. You can go find it. It's fine. If you want to find me on Battle.net, you can just send me a quick message on Twitter. I'll respond. I got to make sure I set you a note. My list is filling up quite fast. If I do stream, it's over at twitch.tv slash NotRobMay. And Jamie, you get to close out the show, my friend. Where can people find you? You can find me at Twitter, currently kind of uh, hiding at the moment. Uh, other reasons. And Battle.net, you can find me at Pseudoping1537. I also had a tidbit today where I learned how to spell Banaka for the first time. Very cool. <laughs> All right, that's nice. it from Exodar. And Jamie S., special sponsored S episode. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Have a good... Or actually, we'll see you Friday. Good man, Jamie. Woo! Adios, folks. Bye. See ya. Thank you.
I foresaw this. Did I miss it? <laughs>